I pray for cares to anyone occupying every public office from the, from the highest in Prime Minister's office. Down to the every public service occupation. And I am speaking on your behalf because pastors will speak on the behalf of the congregation. I am speaking as the head of the national executive. I pray for cares. Shortly after James Marapi took the reins as Prime Minister following the 2019 vote of no confidence against Peter O'Neill's government, he began championing his vision for Papua New Guinea. He often used catchy phrases like take back PNG, a term borrowed from Gary Jaffa, the once vocal provincial member for Oro province. Marapi also coined statements such as making PNG the richest black Christian nation on planet Earth, reflecting his Christian background. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, the curse. Yes, you heard that right. Marapia's curse was no small matter and certainly not something to be taken lightly. This curse stuck in the minds of many, especially after his statement on Repentance Day, August 26, 2019, just one month into his tenure. Many accuse myself of praying for curse. I did not pray for curse in this country. I pray for curse to anyone occupying every public office from the, from the highest in Prime Minister's office. And I curse those who are cursing this country. I pray for curse. I curse those who practice corruption, including myself. If I so, did he curse? Absolutely. He placed a curse on the public service, the very machinery of the country. In this video, you'll hear Marapia's curse on Papua New Guinea's public servants, along with Belden Namo's comments on placing a Bible in the center of the House of Parliament. Note that these are Marapia's words, and there's no intention to blame him for the deaths of MPs since 2019. It's worth noting that 10 MPs also passed away during O'Neill's term from 2012 to 2017. The troubling aspect is Marapia's curse, his own words, on the country's public servants, including himself as the highest paid public servant. I pray for curse to those who want to take bribery to do their job, from the highest to the lowest. Every public servant, including Prime Minister, Ministers, down to Secretaries of State, Police Commissioner, Army Commander, every one of us, Police Workmen, Police Workmen, may our children and their descendants be cursed if we continue down the path of deliberate corruption, systematic corruption, weakness, greed, personal thinking law you yet, may not think of country, we pray for cash for in me line, for kissing money in the public service. For we talk about kissing back our PNG, we're not talking about kissing back because China man kiss him more, white man kiss him more, brown man kiss him, no God, you may have given less, you may have given still. You may have to be back in Boston, no good. Yes, I admit that many have worked tirelessly. Many have worked tirelessly, but amidst us, greed, personal interest, corruption, bribery, corporate greed, such succumbing to interest of foreign multinationals. All this has taken our country not going in the right place, but wrong direction. We are trying to take it back first and foremost. First and foremost, not from anyone but from ourselves. I fear no one, let me tell you. Let me tell you, I fear no one. Me, Magitari, Yahuliman, me fear no one. Today, if our people have forgiven us, I have really the conscience of every public servant who have paid out of public press, that today it is enough now, let us put the interest of our country. <laughs> we included, the case is much even higher. May our lives face death, may our lives face imprisonment, may our lives face... The worst punishment any just can give to humanity if we continue to remain in the path of complacency and corruption. And on this Repentance Day, it is unfair on thousands who are praying for better of their own lives and their country's life, and yet the few of us, the 3% of us who earn money out of public press in Wagani, continue to remain complacent. But wait, 
Have you heard what Belda Nama said about the Parliament's curse? Well, in Papua New Guinea, the words curse and blessing are deeply rooted in both cultural traditions and Christianity. Every language in the country has a term for these concepts, and they are woven into the fabric of society. When these words are spoken, they resonate deeply, striking at the heart of both tradition and faith. Belda Nama, in a powerful moment, uttered the word curse, this time referring to the Bible placed at the center of PNG's House of Parliament. Each passing moment, every opinion held by MPs and public servants, and every belief of a frustrated Papua New Guinean tells a story. Inside the Parliament, me talk with this, Mr. Speaker, it can be a blessing or it can be a curse. Last Parliament does all, 10 plus members he died. You must ask him immediately. We have to review this decision. He got all some group of uh, church leaders who have only been come up with like Tinti Lok Bible come and put him in the Parliament. This like Tinti Lok Sim Bible in the Parliament. You must review him. You must review him. Me look at Muslim Bible sit down it can be a curse or blessing. Prime Minister, you was in the uh, executive government. Whether I'm a good plan or Bible sit down or no God. Because some of the time you may get them to. You may look, look long. Old Testament, you go back. Time all children of Israel will carry mark of the covenant. Look at one of the man say come close to. You come close to the slack of covenant, then you die, that's all. So with a pal Bible, let me start a parliament, then you could play there, or you know, you know, good play there. Something where you may need to discuss him. You may need to prayerfully discuss him. Inside the parliament, me talk with this, Mr. Speaker. It can be a blessing or it can be a curse. Last parliament does all, 10 plus members die. You must ask him immediately. We have to review this decision. Between 2019 and 2024, Papua New Guinea saw the deaths of 16 members of parliament under Prime Minister James Marapia's leadership. The average age of the deceased officials was around 58 years. So, is the curse real? That's for you to decide. James Marapia's Repentance Day speech on August 26, 2020, was significant as it marked a year into his tenure as Prime Minister. Repentance Day in Papua New Guinea is a national day of prayer and reflection, where leaders and citizens alike seek forgiveness and guidance for the future. In his speech, Marapi addressed various issues facing the nation, including corruption and inefficiency within the public service. His controversial statement about a curse on public servants was likely intended to emphasize the need for accountability and reform within the government. However, the strong language he used left a lasting impression on many people, sparking debates and concerns about its implications. To this day, many MPs have passed away, and the performance of the public service machinery is worse than it was since independence. Law and order remain major problems, corruption and family businesses are thriving in Papua New Guinea, and there is no sign of improvement, only deaths and despair in the public service. The question remains, are these popular phrases and curses or blessings changing the country? If not, it suggests one thing, if this country is cursed. Check out this playlist and video of Marapia's grandstanding and popular statements here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more burning questions on PNG politics.